All right. Hey, everyone. Thanks. Uh, hey, Jaquan. <laughs> Thanks for uh, joining us for our last 2021 third Thursdays. <laughs> We're not even taking a break. We'll be back in January. But uh, yeah, um, the, I'm Michael Chovendal. I'm the director of the JKC Gallery. I think everyone here already knows that. Um, and uh, I think, um, you know, I'll just I'll just hand it over uh, to Habib. And thank you to uh, Habib Suave and Heather Palasek for always um taking care of uh, third thursdays and curating this show um and uh i want to wish everyone uh, if i don't see you again uh, until next year a happy new year so um go ahead abib take it away whoa 2021 i want to thank everybody for joining us third thursday this is a monthly event that me and heather we curate and try to bring amazing photographers from all around the world to show their work, show what they're working on. Without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Heather so she can introduce our two artists that we have this month. Um, today, we are so excited to have two local artists um, from Trenton, New Jersey. So we have Abbas Wiswell and Samara Torres, um, both of which are heavily involved in our artist community here in Trenton, New Jersey. Um, Samara works with Artworks, um, which is awesome. And she's going to be presenting us with some of her uh, fine art portraits and um, her collage work tonight. So we're really excited to see that and hear about the new projects that you're working on. Um, and Abbas is what Michael has called tonight a social documentarian um, who is working with travel photography, um, some really amazing portraits, and is getting into street photography. So we'll be able to hear about his new projects as well. So very excited to hear from both of you. Um, Abbas is going to be going first. Uh, Tamara will follow. And we're going to switch things up a little bit tonight. Instead of doing a Q&A at the very end, um, we're going to do a Q&A for Abbas after he presents uh, in the middle of the show. And then we'll have Tamara present and we'll do a Q&A for her at the end. So just be prepared for that. Um, and as always, use the chat box to leave comments on the work as they present and to ask questions so that we can moderate through the Q&A. Um, and if you're ready, Abbas, you can go ahead and start sharing your screen. We're excited to hear about your work tonight. Hello, everybody. Let me start sharing my screen. All right, so first, let me show some of my uh, travel photography. And then after that, I'll show some, some of the portraits. Let's get this. Can everybody see the screen? Okay. Yes, we can. Space bar. Okay. Looks good. Yeah, it looks great. Yes. All right. So, um, first, I'm going to start off with my travel photography. Um, I tried to put it in order, but it got a little mixed up. So, we're going to be jumping from a couple of different countries, three countries. So this first one is uh, in Yemen, and uh, this is uh, actually a corner store, or like how we have here at bodegas and or tea shop. And uh, so I took a photo of this student who actually came behind the counter to serve himself, which is pretty interesting because you can't do that at Starbucks around here. But and uh, you know they just serve beverages, tea and ramen like you see. It's for the it's for like the university students. All right. Let's see. Next. So this is a photo of um, a door in Yemen, a door to a mosque. The reason I took the photo is because I really love the wood uh, engravings. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see my arrow pointing and then on top they have like Arabic writing something very beautiful so i just captured that here's a photo of this is a honey shop and yemen is actually famous for some of its honey and uh yeah they grow i mean they they have the bees the beehives on the side of the mountains so some really good honey in yemen this this is a photo of a uh a class going on inside a mosque. Um, very simple. 
a uh, mosque made out of clay and then uh, plaster is, is covered in plaster. That's the white. So the clay it doesn't melt. Um, as you can see, classroom filled with three students, small, nothing big. This is also the same mosque, a different area. Um, yeah, and just somebody sitting in the mosque, spending their time in the mosque, reading the Quran. Some of these are iPhone pictures too, like the, the first one in the shop and this one. Uh, sometimes, you know, you see moments, you don't have your camera with you. So like this, the sun was setting and it was just really beautiful. So I had to, you know, pull out my iPhone and take it with that. Here's another picture in the mosque, a man reading the Quran. Another iPhone photo. Um, it's a man prostrating, praying in the direction of Mecca. The light was falling beautifully right over him. So again, I had to pull out my iPhone. And also there was a lot of background, like you could see people just chilling after the prayer, having conversations. There's another one. I was trying to get the, the architecture. So this this was uh, this was also in Yemen. Um, this was around the sunset prayer, and uh, actually this was a moment like I was actually at the bottom of the mountain. I saw the sunset and I saw all the people going up. I said there has to be some kind of amazing photo, and I, I actually ran really fast. I was out of breath, and this out of breath uh, from the views and also the hike up. Let me see. So Yemen, this is how the graveyards in Yemen look. And I think uh, a lot of also the Arab countries, but so it's all clay in the mountains in the background. This is that same picture just taken differently with a little different edit. This is actually on the way up up to this last photo on the way up. And this photo was used uh, on the Smithsonian uh, website and also um, was put in a Drexel University uh, uh, gallery. So this is Bangladesh now. Um, I use I, I want to take a picture of this because I wanted to show like the environment and what uh, people this is like a house made from tins and a tin and also a mud floor with like brick on the outside. So this is how their housing situation. This is a restaurant, but this is the kitchen. It's not very the same as our kitchen. You can see everything's just laid out the firewood. The, the potatoes, the chicken, everything is just all over the place. So it's something I wanted to capture. So this photograph was when I was walking, I just saw a man feeding his goat, something you don't see too often. So I took that. This is that same restaurant except the front. Uh, there's actually a young, young kid working. And this is also Bangladesh. This is a form of transportation. It's called a rickshaw. Uh, although I think uh, they motorize their electric. That's why you see his chain is dragging. And then another form is the baby car. I think that's what they call it. Also motorcycles. Right here, I captured a, uh, tried to get a long exposure of the guys on the bike just passing.
Over here, there's a man feeding the cows. Now we're in, uh, this, this is Mecca. This is actually my friend and uh, we were going around like looking for sites. We asked the taxi, taxi man to, uh, to show us some views. So this is where he brought us. This is the outside of the Holy Mosque Mecca. Uh, I just wanted to capture how big it was compared to the people. And now we're back to Bangladesh. This is another kitchen. This is how the kitchens in Bangladesh look. They feed the, the, the clay oven right here with uh, leaves. The leaves, they just put them in so they don't use gas. So here's some of uh, the schools, the kids in school. This is their, how their schools look. This is a farmer. This is in a madrasa where they teach teach uh, the Quran. So right now the kid is memorizing and he's uh, taking a test. These are all from the madrasa. It's a boarding school. So the kids sleep here and also cl the classroom is right here too. So you can see their clothes in the background. Their sleeping uh, mats are on top. And a lot of studying and some people are sleeping like school. Here are the younger kids. They saw the camera, so they started messing around. But yeah, that's the Adifa. And here is how the kids play. They're, they're actually playing cricket in between the trees. the classroom, the boys in the classroom. Another kitchen. Let me see if I can find. All right, so there's this photo, me and my friend when we were in Mecca, uh, we, we were fasting, so we were very tired because it was really hot and we were fasting. Um, so we, we tried to do what the guys here were doing because it's midday, the hottest, hottest uh, time during the day. So everybody mm -hmm. just takes a break, finds a place to sleep. We tried to do it, it wasn't very comfortable. So we walked back to the hotel and that was the photo after coming back. This is another photo at the view. This is the food that we broke our fast with. Here's a portrait of my friend in front of, uh, outside of Mecca, the, the masjid. I just wanted to show how big and these buildings were behind them. This is, we went on a hike and this was at the top of uh, the mountain. Just see, Everywhere we look around us, there were mountains everywhere. This is back to Bangladesh. It's a shepherd. Uh, he was taking his sheep to graze on the grass next to the river. This one's from Yemen. Yemen again. So in Yemen, it was, uh, this, the, the town I lived in was called Hadramot. It was in between the canyons. And at night, the stars were very, very bright. I did a long exposure here. 
So the city lights actually blew up the uh, the mountains. This is the mountains during the day. It's a mosque, another one of the graveyards. Bangladesh. It's the schools. This is actually my two cousins. They were walking, they were on the way to school, and then I took this portrait of them and their friend. Here's a picture of the fish market. So they just had fish everywhere, and you ask the guy whatever you wanted, he'd give it to you. Here we're back to the madrasas. Some of the young men studying outside. Here's a picture from a wedding that I went to. That was the bride and a little girl admiring her makeup. Back to the school in Bangladesh. This is a boat repairman repairing the boat on the side of the river. So this is uh, inside of a house in Bangladesh. Really thought it was really pretty how it was, they painted flowers on the walls. So I captured that. Back to the classrooms. This is a bike shop repair. Uh, they have a lot of rishkas, so we have a demand for repairing. Over here is a fabric producing. So they produce fabric. I don't know if you see a lot of clothing from Bangladesh, uh, from made in Bangladesh. If you look at a lot of your clothes, it's made in Bangladesh. So they're made in somewhere like this. Here's a picture of a farmer and his wife. The wife asked me to take a photo. She said, don't post it on Facebook because the villagers talk too much. Uh, and that's her husband in the background and they got spinach. I think that's, yeah, that's spinach. Kind of did a classroom portrait of everybody who's in the, uh, that room in the madrasa. Hear them there at the table, at their desk, I mean, at their desk again, the older kids. This is a different classroom. They were all very happy to get their portraits through photos. Here's a picture of a young man ordering a pillow. So he's ordering the pillow and he's making it. Another one of them playing cricket. Fruit bazaar, just fruit piled on fruits, vegetables, everything. Another one of the madrasa. So this is the boarding school madrasa, and this is this was them sleeping. This is during class. And this is at the bazaar. This was them repairing the boat, a further out picture. Over here, you see a man walking his cow. Back to the school. The kids were very quiet and then uh, Someone, uh, I think the girl in the pink was like, 
who's that guy? And then everybody started laughing. So she lightened the mood. So this is a man selling uh, lentils, beans, just on the side, side of the bazaar. Bangladesh, those are Bangladesh. It's the school again. This is the sewing machine. I wanted to show that he was using the foot pedal to run the machine, no electric. The power goes, goes out a lot, so they have a lot of, they use machines without power. This is another image of the houses, tin walls, tin roof. This is just a shot I took of the environment. This is the bazaar at night. Another photo of the bazaar at night. And this is somebody's backyard. So just have a cow in there. Back to the school. This is a shot of the Kaaba in Mecca. And I try to get a, uh, a slow motion. And if you look right here, there's a couple of people standing still while everybody else is in, in motion. Here's some from Mexico. This was a coffee farm. In Mexico, you can't tell, but in reality, the, the farm goes down and back up. And if you see the small red cherries, that's the coffee beans. This was a road. These are the coffee beans after they're uh, pulped. And now they're sitting to dry in this tray. These are just some photos of the land. This was a friend making mezcalitas. So I went during uh, the Day of the Dead, so a lot of people were dressed up. This one was in Acapulco, a fisher, fishing town. Some, some more of the Day of the Dead. And this was the market where they were selling flowers for the Day of the Dead. So everywhere you went, all over there was flowers like these. Everybody was carrying them. This is in Vila de Bravo. Hey, Abbas, we had a, a, just a couple questions and yeah, I don't yeah. know how close you are to, to done. We're, um, we're coming up on seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, did you wanna maybe answer those while yeah, yeah, uh, showing? Or, yeah. yeah, yeah, let me let me answer while showing. And since we're yeah. almost at seven, I'm gonna yep. collect. So uh, collect. Salvatore asked for the black and white photos did you shoot those in black and white or were they color and modified later? Uh, which ones? Uh, I guess in your black and whites, uh, are you working all digital is, I guess, the idea then did you convert them to black and white? Yeah, so there's some that are uh, 
black and white from film and then some that were modified. So if it's taken digitally, they were modified. So and that, here, here, go ahead. Oh yeah, sure. Um, oh, and I might snap fast. Um, what camera were you using? What camera was I using? <laughs> so uh, those uh, for the film, I use a Contax G1. And then for the digital, I use a Fujifilm X Pro 2. So this portrait was actually taken on a Contax G1. It's a double exposure. That camera allows me to do double exposures. That makes so sense. I've been experimenting with that. And these are some of the images that I've gotten. So this one was actually straight from the camera. That's, uh, that's an amazing double exposure. Um, Heather asked, um, your school themed photos are so beautiful. You have so many examples of them. Is there a project you worked on involving schools? Or was okay. there a reason why these had you know, specific importance to you? Um, well, education is very important. And uh, so I wanted to capture the, the, the environment that was out in Bangladesh. Their schools, they, they don't have much. It's a lot you know, less than our schools out here. But this, the, what I was trying to show is that the kids are still happy. They're still trying to learn. They were there before the teacher, like 30 minutes before the teacher. They were all hanging out before, like even the time they had to be there. Um, yeah, so it was something I just wanted to, you know, show everybody out there. And uh, maybe I can continue to find other schools and involving and put it all together into a theme. But yeah, that's... That's that. Yeah. And go through the points. Uh, was there another question? No, no, that was it. A lot of great comments. Uh, I'll save the chat and send them to you. All right. So I'll just show a few more portraits, and that should be should be good. So this is another one from the contacts. This is actually a self portrait. Um, usually, I just take them and see how they come out. Sometimes I get lucky. Sometimes they're just okay. But you know, still, it's a memory, so I keep them. This one I took of the view and then I took of myself while I was in Mexico. It actually turned out very, very dope. This is a farmer. So I also take portraits for uh, musicians and rappers. Here's a photo, here's another one, same person. Sometimes I just take portraits of my friends like right there. This is the work I'm doing around here where I live. Here's another double exposure. Although I think this one I I, uh, I did it on edit, even though it was taken still on film. Post process. This was taken in color, but I made it black and white just because I felt it would look a little better. This was on Cinestill film. So a lot of the portraits is film. These are some portraits of uh, Raven, the painter. And basically I just took a roll of black and white and saw what I could get. And with some color. This is an example of a digital double exposure. So I took two photos, put them together. This was done digitally. Photographers going out to shoot, take pictures of each other. These are some film. Yeah, whenever I'm doing those double exposures, I'm just trying things out. Here's some at Washington Square Park in New York. People always dress cool out there.
is a picture of me and my friends just going out to explore. All right, and that should be it. Thank you. Thank you, that was wonderful. <laughs> really amusing work. Um, I loved seeing all of your projects. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here and sharing. Of course, thank you guys for having me. Yes, yes, Abbas, if you have to go, thank you. Thank you. And then Tamara, um, if you're ready, you're up next. Okay. Um, well, Abbas, you have um, to stop <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll get off of it. <laughs> there we go. Abbas, your work is amazing. I absolutely love it. I appreciate you. <laughs> okay, so I want to share my screen. Give me a second. Can everyone see the PowerPoint? Yes. yes. Old school PowerPoint. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Part of this wonderful photography um, thing that you guys been doing, and I I have haven't stopped being a part of it since um, the beginning, and it's been amazing just to see how many photographers and people community out there. Okay, so this was me. This is really quick. I got in so much trouble because you see this film here. I didn't know, like at that time, like, you know, I was going to probably love photography as, mu as much as I did, but I definitely opened the role and, and just, there was some, a lot of yelling because it was like, just like opening roles just to see what was in there. Cause I was curious. Um, that's after it photo. So what I wanted to, I guess, talk about, um, was my collage photography, a little bit of it and kind of the process. This is my friend Adele. I photographed her, um, in New York way back and it was doing I there was times where I helped like fashion photographers and I will be there helping take pictures or just like helping doing set so the way that I usually do um my collages is I kind of photograph a person first and then the things that I have on the side that I collage with are either paintings that I paint or old um books that I find around and stuff like that uh let's see this is my friend Ian, it was the same thing. So there was a moment in my time when I first started photography, I didn't really know much about, um, I was too scared to take street photography. I'm not a street photographer. I was too nervous to do that. So I would often have friends just come over my house and we would put backdrops up and we would just like kind of hang out the whole day and I would photograph them. And then from that, I would try to either paint or collage or do something with whatever images and stories that we taken. Like, you know, that we just like hung out at the house. So this was, again, this was uh, another friend of mine who came down and it was the same thing. I usually tell my friends, you know, I have an idea. Would you come down and let me photograph you? I'm very lucky none of them ever question. They just like pop up and be like, okay. And I said, you know, I need to do, I want to really want to do this nude image. And she was just like, let's do it. So fortunate to have friends. Again, a lot of it is like old um, kind of magazines, the painting in the back of mine, some or, or images that I've taken. Okay. This is another friend of mine, Melissa. So when I got into photography, again, because I didn't really do street photography, I wanted to tell stories with my images because I felt like I was a big fan of like David LaChapelle and other photographers that just told stories with what they um, took pictures of. And <laughs> this was actually taken in my son's room in the attic on a little corner by the wall. This money was actually my rent money that my landlord was downstairs waiting for. And I was like, give me 10 minutes. Um, a friend was holding a lamp over for light and my son was playing F Xbox in the back, playing some like Batman game. Um, and to this day, my son still says, I cannot believe there were like models walking around my house and I was worried about my Batman game or whatever. We joke about that all the time. But this took about 10 minutes to make. Um, and we talked about it ahead of time. And it was just an idea and a concept that I had. And I think it was one of the photos that got me 
wanting to take pictures who have conversations with and tell stories within my images. Um, and each of the ones that I have shown, um, people can ask me questions and talk about. Each one of them is like a long conversation. That's why I'm just kind of going through quickly. That's okay. This one I took in my house is called Platanos. Um, and this was, um, was part of a series that I'm working on for his, Hispanic women, Latina women. And this is the front room that I had. It's, it's an amazing front room with a lot of plants. And you know, this is what happens when I like need to do some creativity. I just like use myself as a self-portrait. This is called a breakup. Um, I had to do an exhibition for um, this show in London. And the title of it was, what is the point? And I think, I believe this is when, right when Trump became president. And I, I kept thinking like, well, what am I gonna do? And, and for whatever reason, I was going through like album covers and I saw Billie Holiday's album cover. And I got the idea like, you know, like breaking up with your country, even though you love it right now, like when do you break up with your like, at the moment, like I, I was just like done. And so I called my friend um, and she came down and we talked about the whole image and what I wanted to do and kind of portray. And a letter goes with this. It's like a um, Dear John letter is also part of this image that went into the exhibition. Um, and this is like, this was just my house that I did it, so. Um, and this is a new project that I'm working on. I am, I've been, I was in Puerto Rico for five weeks and I'll probably be going back there for a little while longer. I'm photographing women of Puerto Rican Afro descent and we're talking about feminism. Um, and it's a big project, a long one to get too much into it right now. But I'm basically in this image, I, I'm some of the images I'm having women um, dressed as men who he had either changed their lives or introduced them to feminism or were causes of them to become um, a feminist. The reason I wanted to do this because in Puerto Rico, there's been this big rise of feminism that have actually changed the laws of Puerto Rico themselves. And I wanted to capture some of the women um, that are part of this group or kind of like believe in that what's happening over there. And, you know, she is actually from Trenton, um, Cynthia. She's and this was an amazing, we had a great conversation about this image. Um, everything that's collaged are pictures that I've taken in Puerto Rico, like things that I've like photographed. Um, and then this is the same thing. We have discussed this with a woman. So my walks with Torres are photographs that I often take traveling or in the street of people, just community stuff. I have two Instagrams and the walks with tourists I just started because I literally take a photo every day and edit a photo every single day, like even if it's nothing and I have like nowhere to put these pictures. <laughs> so I started something, um, walk with tourists, which is like just photos of things that I've taken or images. And I'm just gonna go through this very like, you know, quickly, not so fast, but not really much. This is another one of my friends. This is my backyard. When summer she came over, we had an idea and we just took a picture. Um, simple image. Okay. Same thing here is usually people coming to visit me and we just come up with a concept, an idea. This specific picture it, um, it has a long story behind it. I won't get too much into it, but I just like to think that any photographs that I take or want to take, I want people to just kind of get lost in it or just like have a story behind it. Portraits of people in Trenton. I feel like a lot of people may know this if you're from Trenton. This is the Jamaican story across the street from the police station. You're an amazing person. This is Craig Chauffeur's grandmother, who's I believe now 100, if I'm not mistaken, I think Craig's on here. These are uh, from Puerto Rico. Um, we got to go into, I tagged along with Sam and Josue and they had a video that we're gonna be doing, a music video. Um, and we tagged along and we got to visit his uncle's farm. 
um, this is Sam's cousin. She's part of also part of my new project that I'm doing, working on. Um, I initially wanted to take, I wasn't even really paying attention to this image, but I wanted to take photos of, I like the way the light was hitting his hand. Um, Sam and uncle basically picked, grinded, and did coffee from us from the beginning, from scratch. And this was them just sorting out the coffee beans. That was him cooking the beans and his, in his studio, his like little area that he makes things. Okay, so remember the photos that I've told you guys earlier about the, the women that I'm either for photographing collage and they're dressed as men, like, you know, based on this big feminist idea that I'm working on right now. When I went to Puerto Rico, I, completely thought I had this idea. I'm going to photograph these women dressed as men. They're going to tell me their stories. We're going to talk about domestic violence. We're going to talk about like all the issues that's happening in Puerto Rico. And, and something really twisted happened was that I literally reconnected with my own roots and self. It was just like this random accident that happened. It was like, you know, and I got to talk to women. This woman right here, uh, she's 98 years old. And she is, she told me her eyes are dry, which is kind of like, you know, she's going blind. So she had to hold something while I photographed her. Um, and she's one of the original sisters that started Bomba in Puerto Rico, you know, and she was talking to me. I mean, every time these women talked to me, I was just crying all over the place. Um, this woman right here, it was, she was part of the organization that, or for the Afro-Caribbean, um, Afro-Caribbean, community up there. And so they had this big event for the first time in Luisa, a, um, they had like a princess event, like, I don't know, some weird pageant. And for the first time, Luisa, which was like, it's like one of the main places of like Afro Caribbean, the woman won. So they had this huge celebration out there. And this is one of the, when she was coming to visit, this is kind of one of the images. So the little girl, that's here. <laughs> she was, she was so pissed off her. It was really hot and they had to wait for this princess to come to do a performance. And her dad um, walked by and, and gave her like a little bit of water, but then kind of left. And you can tell by her face who was standing there. And I just thought it was really cool that this guy was walking there with his beer walking by. And it just, for me, it was just like a perfect moment. Uh, Let's see. This was in Puerto Rico, we went with Sam. Um, this was one of the rivers that we went swimming in and I just thought the view was absolutely just magical and um, I wanted to just capture that. This is when I went to Vietnam. Um, again, I'm not a street photographer. So all you street photographers here, just like, you know, cut me a little break. <laughs> I do collages, but so one of the things about being in a different country is that, you know, you want to capture as much as possible, but you don't want to also expose people, I guess. That's like my big problem. I'm always too nervous, you know, but then, you know, as we we're walking, I just, I tried to capture a couple of the images. I took a zillion photos and I just, you know, I wanted to share just a couple of what I've took, I took. And I just thought this was interesting that they, these women were just sitting there and they were just kind of talking in, in their own environment. And I so wanted to sit in that bench so bad and just have a conversation with them. That was like, it just felt like really beautiful to see that just walking by. And then some of the men that a lot of the barbers actually, I noticed were outside. I'm not sure if anyone been to Hanoi here or, you know, Vietnam, but it seemed like all the barbers were outside. So I just thought that was like really, fun and interesting to see he was like sleeping on a job. Um, and then we went to the mountainside to like the farm side. And these, the reason I took this image, there's so many I took, but these two little boys, they were actually cleaning the waters. That was like a job that they had. And shortly after I took this, they were like kind of like messing around. They took the clothes off and jumped and started swimming in the water. And I just felt like that was kind of inappropriate for me to take, <laughs> but Again, it was just an amazing, magical experience. Um, this is during the pandemic. I'm not sure 
what photographers were doing, but I certainly was walking around a lot. And these are some of the pictures that I've taken because I, I had, like I said, I take at least a photo a day, maybe more, but I have to edit every day. And sometimes it's just be as simple as things like this. Okay, and so finally, I'm just gonna end it here really quickly. So Fabrica de Fotos is a is part of my community work. Um, I have a studio artworks. I don't work there, even though I, you know, I feel like sometimes I do. I have a studio there and Fabrica de Fotos is just a community thing that I started with some of um, undocumented students, um, first or second generation. And we, we have Zoom meetings on Fridays. We talk about photography. We've had guests come in um, to speak to them. And then we try to have an exhibition at the end of it. Um, they all receive cameras. I, I started with six students. Now I had the last one was 13, in, including parents that were involved. And the next one I'm hoping to be doing in Puerto Rico um, with some of the schools up there. So that's kind of it. That went really fast, hopefully. No, you did such a great job. That was awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great job, Smaram. Great job, great job. So let's see, um, Michael, if you want to questions. Moderate. No questions? Well, maybe- Lots of good comments uh yeah no uh no questions <laughs> well just so you all know um abbas had to head out early so we just have tamara here if anyone has any questions for her um for tamara specifically my questions are all around the place let me ask you how long were you in vietnam for and how many photos did you think you, you took out there um, I think we were out there for about 14 days, if I'm not mistaken. I took a lot. I mean, like I could have a whole exhibition based on just everything I took. And there were a lot of street photos. Uh, there were a lot of more photos of women. I noticed that a lot of women worked really hard up there and I was trying to capture as many as I could. So that was, just, it was an incredible experience. That's awesome. I can ask you questions all day. You know, there's you, know, a, there's you inspire a me so much, Tamara. I want to say that. I have one more quick question. So um, it's something about when I'm shooting. I love shooting all around, you know, when I go to different cities, but something about me being in Trenton or in my neighborhood, you know, I feel something inside and it kind of goes, it transfers into photos. How do you feel when you're in Puerto Rico? Like when you're out in Puerto Rico shooting, is it is do oh, something oh. a little bit more deeper? Like, is it? Well, actually, you know, what's interesting is um, I have a show at King University um, in April 14th, the opening, and I have, I'm sure in some of my photographs that I did from Puerto Rico. Um, yeah. I, like I said, I wish sometimes I had if I, I was by myself, I didn't have anyone there with me to take pictures. But when the lady came from Luisa, the princess to, you know, she was kind of coming in. It was like a big parade. There were like thousands of people out there. There were little girls dancing bomba in the street. There was like people just like African drums and all this stuff going on that I was so involved in like soaking it all in because it's not something I see normally that I didn't take any pictures. I was just like, I went back to San Juan like what? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking around this stupid camera around my neck. I didn't take no photos. So, um, but the women that I got to meet was one of the ladies that did Bomba dancing. She, she actually was incredible. And, and she told me that um, when I go to the beach, that was like, it, it was like a river connecting to the ocean. That was where a lot of slaves were brought there. For, from Caribbean to be sold to the United States and stuff. So it was like, if you step in that water, you're stepping in the waters that they were. And I, mean, I was just like crying. It was just like an intense thing. So I guess for me, I wish I was more courageous in taking street photography because I probably would have captured more, but I was more worried about taking their portraits, I guess. I, I totally understand you. Sometimes as a photographer, we just live in a moment sometimes. I'm, I'm guilty of that all the time. Right. <laughs> So Craig asks, what camera are you using? Um, how many people? I guess like I'm, I'm using a Pentax. Wait, what am I using? <laughs> I feel like I had this conversation with Habib and how I dislike this camera I have. Was it like a Fuji that you have one too? 
I shoot Fuji film, you know, it all day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it is it film you're also using tomorrow? No, I'm not. I'm not using no. film. Using digital. Yeah. Um. Can oh, rabbit asks if you could talk a bit more about your a bit about uh, your interest in taking Fabrica outside of the U.S. And are there any links for us to support or follow that journey? Um, Fabrica the photo started during the pandemic, so it's very very new. Um, I hope. I've I've spoken to other artists that were from outside of like the country and different states. And hopefully I'm trying to gather something that I can kind of keep going and using it. Um, I think right now, one of the things I wanted to highlight is that there are a lot of muralists and there are a lot of painters and drawers and people who do all that stuff, right? And like most artists, for example, in Puerto Rico would look at sculptures or murals and they get all excited and painters and Blah, blah, blah. But I think photography is not often talked about as a serious craft to, for students to learn and actually make a career out of it. And that's just my opinion, you know? So when I talk to a lot of the students, I, I like to see how some of them like end up falling in love with photography just by like thinking like, oh, you can actually make a career out of this. So that's kind of a goal. So I, I'm hopefully, it, like I said, I just started with doing a pandemic, just being bored at home and, um, I'm hoping that I can kind of expand it to different places like Costa Rica, Puerto Rico. I think we already spoke about Guatemala and places in the States. Yeah, you know, I, I want to make a quick note before I get to Gary's question. Um, you you warned us that your your cat would uh, go nuts while you were talking. All so right, for those that's who thought talking there was a so crying fast. baby in the background, that was Tamara's cat. <laughs> Sorry. He's like 20 years old. He hasn't died yet. I don't know. Oh. Just, <laughs> uh, so Gary there's Suresky, nothing wrong with him, by the no. way. No, okay. <laughs> Gary Suresky asked, how did you become such a good editor of your work? I actually I praise from Gary Suresky. <laughs> um, I actually taught myself how to um, use Photoshop and, and, and do editing. Um, and then after that, I would often ask people to try to do YouTube workshops or whatever I can. But I... I used to edit a lot and put a lot into collages. And recently, maybe like six years ago, a, friend, a real close friend of mine told me the less is more. So I started to think about the idea. Um, but I if I just feel like I've been collaging with a paper or with photos for such a long time that it just comes really naturally. So thank you for, for that, because I always worry about that. <laughs> Yeah, I think that that's it on the question. Okay. Yeah. Habib and Heather, did you want to any closing thoughts? Um, well, just a big thank you, Tamara and Eva Bastos here. Um, big thank you for coming in. It was a pleasure to feature you. I'm so happy we finally had like a, a big chat and night here. <laughs> um, and just a reminder to everyone that our next uh, third Thursdays will be on January 20th. So you can mark it on your calendars ahead of time to, to log in and we'll see you then. Just big thank yous. Yes, thank you very much. That was wonderful. And thank you all for coming. Yes. Thank you guys so much. This thank year we had me. so many amazing artists. You know, it was, we had to pick it back up and, um, the artists that we has left me speechless. Guys motivate me. Um, the guests we have, our regulars, we want to definitely thank everyone that comes and views. Because without you guys, you know, it wouldn't be a show at all. You know, <laughs> true. Definitely yeah. to say. It's like just a lot of thank yous all the way around the board. We're looking forward to next year. Um, we're back in person at the JKC Gallery, downtown Trenton, if you're local or just going down that area, you're around that area, try to stop by, you know, and big thank yous. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yep. Also, if any guests are in here that are photographers, if you're interested in being in any upcoming shows for next year, reach out to me or Heather or Mr. Dalton and he'll throw you over our way. You know, <laughs> we want people to interact. When we came up with this idea, this is not a formal quote unquote artist talk. We just want people to express themselves, projects that they're working on, projects they're working on in the past or stuff that you shoot. So everyone, please, you know, 
still walking with you. Throw it out there. Absolutely. And uh, thank you, Heather and Habib, for uh, keeping it going <laughs> through all the changes. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> awesome. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. I'm going to have a good night, everyone. Yeah. Have a good night, everyone. I'm going to stop the recording now. <laughs>